let's look at our notes for today. So the first one I wanted you to do was number one. So 8x minus 5 minus 6x. So the first thing you need to do is combine your like terms. So 8x minus 6x. 2x. And then carry everything else down. And then we're going to add 5 to both sides. And carry down our sign. Then divide by 2. Right. X is greater than 7. So whenever we do our number line, we need to have 7. And then go ahead and do like 8 and 9. And then go the opposite way, 6 and 5. So if you need to look back at yesterday's notes, so greater than, is it going to be open or closed? Greater than? It's open. Anytime it's or equal to, then it's closed. And then it's greater, greater goes right. So open circle and right. And another way to remember is look how this arrow at the end of it looks very similar to the greater than symbol. So it's going right. And then interval notation, we look and see reading the number line from left to right. So we'll start left would be seven. The arrow going on and on forever means infinity, positive infinity. We're going to use parentheses on these because there's not an or equal to. So the interval notation is 7 to infinity. All right, let's go to the next one. Mm, what do we normally do, though? Yeah, uh, subtract your x's. Right. 2 is less than negative 3. Is 2 less than negative 3? So that's false, right? So what does it mean when it's false? No solution. The 0 with the slash, no solution. Does that make sense now? So you've got to make sure that it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, if it's a false, then it's a no solution. I right, go ahead and do number three. So combine your like terms, 4x minus 9x. So 4 minus 9. Yeah, negative 5. And then your constant's a positive 8 and a positive 2 plus 10 less than negative 5. So now solve it out. So I'm left with a negative 5x is less than negative 15. I am going to divide by a negative 5. So our rule is you've got to flip that sign anytime you divide both sides by a negative. So instead of it being less than, it's going to be greater than. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
make a number line. Greater than, it's not a greater than or equal to, so it's an open circle, and it's greater than, so it's going right. Ooh. So then interval notation, it's going from three to infinity. It's not an or equal to, so it's parentheses. Three to infinity with parentheses around it. Now let's review the steps real quick before we go to the other three problems. The steps to solve multi-step equations, step one, use the blank to remove any grouping sim symbols. What do we do to remove grouping symbols? Distributive property, right. Blank, blank, blank on each side of the inequality. After you distribute, then you've got to write combine like terms. After you combine like terms, those move variables. With inequalities, what we want to have is x and then the inequality symbol and then a number. So we want all of the variables on the left side. So move the variables to the left side of the inequality. And then use inverse operations to solve. So add or subtract, multiply, divide, inverse operations. And then our last thing is don't forget to switch the inequality symbol when multiplying or dividing by a negative. So like we did on number three, we divided both sides by a negative, circle the inequality sign, and then rewrite it. All right, we have three more examples. Let's go ahead and go to this one that we wrote. We changed it. 6x minus 3 is less than 8 plus 6x. So it's already simplified. So we need to move the 6x to the left side. So then they cancel. We're left with negative 3 is less than 8. So think about that. Is negative 3 less than 8? Yes, that's true. So what happens whenever it's a true statement? one of those special cases. When it's false, it's no solution. When it's true, infinity, or sometimes on your um, solutions, it'll be all real numbers that are with the extra line. And what that one means is all real numbers. So you could have either one as an answer choice, infinite solutions or all real numbers. They mean the same thing. All right, go ahead and start the next problem.
Make sure on this one you're distributing the negative 8. Negative 8 times a negative 2 is a positive 16. So double check your work. Now move all your x's. Follow along. So x is less than 9. Draw yourself a number line. Oh, what would the number line be on all real numbers? It's everything from left to right. Everything's shaded. All shaded. That would be the solution for all real numbers. So on uh, two, two is no solution, so you, no shading. So that's a number line, no shading. Because none of the numbers will work. It's always false, so no shading on that one. So all real numbers all shaded, false, no solution, none shaded. Okay, so let's go back to five. So less than is open. Less is going left. L. L. So starting from left to right, when we read it, negative infinity to nine. So that's how we write our interval, negative infinity to 9. The only time you have a bracket is if it's or equal to, and there's not one that's or equal to on this one. All right, go ahead and do number 6. Check your first step with mine. So I distributed. Now I need to combine like terms. Check that next line. Make sure it's the same. Um, the most frequent mistake would be that you're not distributing the 3 to the negative 1 and you didn't put a negative 3. That's where people make the mistake. So be careful with that. Make sure you distribute the 3 to everything inside that parentheses. All right, now move the 9x to the other side. 
So it's a negative 2x plus 9 greater than negative 3. Check the next line. Make sure you're following the same steps. You get negative 2x is greater than negative 12. Then I'm going to divide by negative 2. What do I need to remember to do? Flip it. So negative 12 divided by negative 2. Positive 6. Negative 3 minus 9 is negative 12. Draw your number line. So, open or closed? Open, and then which direction? Left, less than left. Open, left. There you go. Yep, negative infinity to 6. So you always read it from left to right, write the numbers, and then that helps you write the interval. Negative infinity to 6. Okay, so see how I showed all this work? When you do your delta math, you're doing the same thing. So y'all have started it, but you haven't finished your delta math from yesterday, and I'm just adding one more section. So whenever you do your delta math, you need to make it easy for me to find your answer. So make sure you put your name, date, and period, and you put on here delta math, and then you write number one here. You can do it two here, three here, however you want, as long as your work is in this one area. I don't want to see work this way, this way, this way. It's not a scratch sheet of paper. It is where you are showing your work. So see how it's all written so nice and neat right here? That's how you need to be writing it for each one of your Delta Math problems. And then putting it in here real organized make sure you draw your number lines write your interval notations you're going to fold this like that and if you want to cut it you can but you don't have to and you're going to glue this in your journal on the next page and then i 